Well, uh, good afternoon. My name is Jos Notermans. I'm from uh, SPG Prints, formerly known as Stork. And uh, probably during this presentation, I will still use the word Stork because I'm used to that and I grew up with that. But I'm trying to do my best to keep it at SPG Prints. Oh, now I pushed it too much, I think. No, okay. So I'll take you uh, uh, through a couple of slides. Uh, in which I will uh, start with an overview of the digital textile market as it is today. And from there, uh, I will uh, address some of the technology challenges that we uh, are facing in, uh, in this part of digital printing um, uh, and bring you to an uh, overview of uh, total cost of ownership because that is, in the end, determining uh, for us what is going to be the, uh, the ultimate digital textile printer um, that we are, uh, that we have... Uh, uh, con uh, concept have made of that and we are also now currently developing and we will introduce next year. Starting with the market, uh, this is data coming from uh, Pyra report um, and they uh, split out in four market segments. Clothing, that's uh, fashion, that's swimwear, sportswear, everything uh, uh, with that. Uh, household or home furnishing, which is uh, uh, it can be uh, curtains, it can be uh, bed sheets, it can be for uh, uh, seat covers, all this kind of stuff. Then there is uh, technical textiles, which is uh, uh, sales, uh, car seats, uh, all this kind of things. And the last uh, segment is uh, sign and banner, or uh, uh, some call it flex and banners, but a lot of the stuff which is here on the show. And what you see from this uh, data, uh, history plus uh, future, you can see that uh, in 2012, it was uh, close to 500 million square meter printed uh, digitally, from which uh, a considerable part, and it's a purple part in this uh, graph, is in the uh, sign and banner or display market. So that's uh, a lot of it you see here at this show. But uh, for Stark, the interesting uh, uh, markets are the, the blue one and the red one is the clothing and the household, because this is the traditional rotary screen uh, printing mills that uh, are uh, uh, almost all using uh, our rotary equipment and our rotary screens. Um, and you see that this market was uh, just over 200 million square meters in 2012, and it will grow to uh, uh, more than, uh, what is it, 800? No, more than 600 uh, million in uh, the year 2017. Uh, a rule of a thumb is that you can print about 100 uh, linear meters of fabric with one uh, kilo of ink. So if you divide that number by 100, then you know how many kilos of ink are in this industry. And of course, this is an interesting uh, number for uh, uh, business-wise looking to digital textile. If you look at uh, some very simple numbers, then um, uh, there's an interesting conclusion, and that is that the traditional market is still growing. Uh, because at the moment, it's about 30 billion square meters totally printed in the world. And that grows almost in the same rate as the world population, which is between 1% and 1.2% per year. Of course, there's a little bit uh, uh, going up and down. Uh, we have watched and we've seen that always when there's a crisis, you get more print in fashion. So for us, it's good when there is a crisis because then there's more printing in, in textiles. But if you look at the long run, it grows with that same rate. Uh, only uh, uh, a little uh, over 1% of that total is in the digital market, and then it's the digital market as we as SPG Prints want to address it. So home, home furnishing and, uh, and fashion. But that one is growing according to Pyra with 24% per year. So if you then make a very simple Excel calculation, you can see that although digital more than doubles in the next uh, five years, you still see that also the conventional grows a little bit because this 1.2% over 30 billion meters is still a lot. You can extrapolate this whole table and you'll find out that by the year 2032, uh, conventional is gone, but it would be lovely if all those growth rates are staying that high for such a long time. And if I can predict that, I'll stop working at SPG Prince and I go to the stock market. So if we look at digital textile today, then it's mainly used, uh, and that's also where it started, in the sampling uh, industry, because digital used to be very slow very ex expensive and that was limiting the use for production but for sampling it was ideal because you can print very quickly and you have a sample at hand in the same day where in conventional it can take several weeks before you have a sample of, of, a, of a textile print 
So that's where it was used. And today, almost all samples that you see if you go to a show like Premier Vision will be printed digital. But still, most of the, of the production runs are printed conventional, simply because of the cost per meter. And digital has gone down considerably in cost per meter, but it's still uh, three times more expensive than conventional in, in Europe and, and, and five times more expensive in, uh, in Asia. So the bulk of the production is still done in, in the conventional way, flatbed and rotary. But we see in the bottom, uh, the green area is, uh, is an area that has now been taken by what we call the scanning machines, so with the moving print heads. Um, and we have also seen already the introduction of the Amos Lario uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, and that one has taken it a little bit more up, so you see larger run lengths done digital as well. But still, the majority of the designs will, will uh, be printed conventional. And if I make this picture again in, in five years, it will look a little bit different, but not much. It will not be that uh, the blue area is, is considerably smaller. So that's good news for my colleagues that are on the rotary side of the business because it means they still have a job the coming uh, years. If we look at the, uh, at the markets, uh, and we did here a review uh, from two sides. On one side, I, I, we split it up the digital textile market. And on the other side, we look at the machines. And then we see that um, uh, if you look at what is digital, where did it start? Then it started here in the fashion because of uh, some simple uh, reasons. Uh, that the biggest one is that reactive inks were the first one to be available. And um, uh, there was only narrow machines, so you couldn't go into bed sheets and all that stuff. But in fashion, it was used to make samples. That was in the, uh, in the 90s uh, to, to the year 2000. Uh, we as uh, Stork, we launched the first digital printer. We showed at the ITMA in 1991. So if you think digital textile is new, then I have to disappoint you, it's already 27 years old. Uh, from there, it went to, um, uh, to a complete different area, which is the flags and sign and banner. Because what was happening is that the, the traditional textile industry was seeing that the technology was too slow, too expensive, and too unreliable to print production. So you could say that most of the rotary printing companies were quite disappointed by the technology. Uh, and initially, they were very excited because they saw you can print everything you want. Uh, yeah, you don't have any repeats. You can print 16 million colors. It all sounded great. But then when it had to go to production, it, it was a big disappointment. So they more or less turned their back on, on digital printing for, for, for quite a long time. But then when the drop-on-demand technology came up and companies like first NCAT and then uh, uh, Mimaki uh, started to make printers for, uh, for the textile industry, uh, new guys, new entrants uh, came up and started to use the technology to, to print uh, signs and banners at very small short run uh, productions. And we sometimes call that, uh, uh, it was a typical ponytail shop, eh? so it was uh, uh, one guy with a ponytail starting... Uh, So it was relatively small companies starting sometimes even in their garage with one printer, a small steamer and a, and, and a small washing machine and they could produce some, some uh, textiles. And that went on for quite a while. Uh, but it changed again in 2009-2010 uh, in, in because then the first Kyocera based machines came on the market. Uh, Rajani, uh, MS, uh, uh, we as Stork, we brought machines on the market using the Kyocera printhead which initially was used in the, uh, in the uh, graphic side of the business. I remember Osei uh, was the, one of the first to use it in the, uh, in the jet stream. But those print heads allowed the machines to become considerably faster. And because they became faster, also uh, the price per meter was going down because you could write off the investment on the printer on a, on a much bigger amount of meters. Also the ink prices were going down because the, the volumes went up, so the prices went down and it becomes affordable and it becomes uh, um, uh, really something that people could make money with. And last but not least, it, it was also much more reliable. So people could start a job and, and know that they would have several hundred meters of fabric at the end after one hour of printing. So that is where, uh, where it went. Uh, uh, and, and that also brought the digital technology back to the rotary printing companies, so to our traditional customers. And we now see it also moving into a direction of uh, where, where pigment inks come available. And that, uh, that makes uh, uh, that it opens up the home furnishing market. 
Home furnishing, if you look at bedding, a lot of the bedding is, uh, is white format, but is, is 3 meter 20 wide, often printed with pigments. Pigment in digital textiles, I could talk for an hour only about that, um, but it now starts to, to become reliable and become available. So we launched a, uh, uh, we showed a uh, Kyocera uh, print head uh, range pigment inks at the Heimtech Steel uh, earlier this year. Um, that will be commercially launched in the next couple of months. And then we also see that the home furnishing market starts to pick up digital. So what are the trends that we see in, uh, in, in digital textile? Well, there, in, in general, if we look to, to, to printing, textile printing in general, then we see that prints are in fashion. If you now look around and you see, especially lady fashion, a lot of it is printed. And um, uh, what also is, has changed, in the, in the past you had four seasons. You had summer, winter, fall and, and spring. Now every uh, brand has at least six, but in many cases eight seasons per year. If you go into a Zara store and you go six weeks later in a Zara store, you will not find one of the same clothes. They're changing every six weeks the complete collection. So that means that there is a lot more faster turnaround time. It means more designs are printed in shorter run lengths. And that's all things that are also helping digital to move along. Like I said already in one of the previous slides, almost all the samples are made digital, but a lot of the volume is, uh, is, is sold conventional, but it is sold through these digital samples. And that is uh, making that we see an increase in quality of, of textile. So if you also look to our uh, sales of our high-end screens, it's growing faster than the sales of our, let's say, regular screens. We see an increasing power at brand owners. And, uh, Nike is an example. They are uh, very much into uh, sustainability, and so they're pushing uh, people to print in an in a, uh, uh, ecological friendly way. And that's also something that's helping, helping digital. As sustainability becomes an issue, uh, 2015 ITMA, the main theme of the ITMA will be sustainability. If we look at digital specifically, then uh, customers tell us that they can sell digital designs more easy. Uh, the gen now the generation uh, designers that have grown up with Photoshop and so on, they can create very beautiful designs and they sell better than the traditional stripes or uh, designs that, that you know from, from 20, uh, 20 years ago. In some markets, even digital already sets the standard. If you look to the scarves that you can buy, uh, the Hermes or Ferragano scarves that you buy in the airplane or at, 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 at uh, many of the airports, a lot of them are done digital. Basically, they are digital determines how, what a good scarf is. And um, big brands use digital textile printing to say, look, we are very uh, conscious about our environment and that's why we print digital. And that the home deco market is moving digital, I already mentioned. So what is the driver for digital? Well, the main driver is short-term delivery. Uh, brand owners, they move the stock risk basically uh, to the producers of the fabric and they, they uh, have to act on that. And what they are doing now is in the past, they were printing a lot of uh, stock and then the people were trying to sell that. And what they could not sell was later on as a markdown in the shops. And you know that from all the sales actions in shops. What you see now more and more is that they, instead of trying to sell what they already produced, they're now producing what they already sold. So brands like Zara, they monitor their shops every day and they look what is sold and that, that is reordered. So typical printing companies are now printing small runs and, and often many times uh, uh, again. So uh, in the old days, one of the tricks that people were using to create more choice is to take one design and print it in several colorways. So you had the same flower design, but one was with a purple background and the other one with a green background. And th that was, that was uh, handy because you can use the same screens. You, you don't have the cost of, of more screens. You only need to change the printing pace. With digital, you don't have screens. You can change the design every time. So you instead of having two very look-alike uh, designs, you can have oh, two completely different ones. Now, now we can find out if everything is water fast here. <laughs> so I think so. Um, there is a clear differentiation uh, coming up between the, the, the volumes that are coming from Asia, which, uh, and this is a little, little generic, but the, 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 the large volumes is, is lower quality and you have the high volume, uh, the, the low volumes normally are higher quality and done more and more in, in digital. People need less 
uh, employees in production. This is, of course, a very important point because textile is quite labor intensive. If you can take less people to print the same volume, it helps you to, to cut your cost. And uh, there is high savings on energy and water. I saw a, um, uh, a comparison from a customer in Germany. For one uh, meter of fabric that he did conventional, it cost him 50 liters of water to print it. And with digital, it was only 13. So it's uh, yeah, almost one quarter of, uh, of the amount. So why is that digital textile so difficult? Well, it is always compared to the big brother, to conventional printing. And conventional printing machines run 40 meters per minute. So for a long time, textile people were saying, yeah, if you're talking about uh, 100 square meters per hour, it is, it is nothing. They were thinking about uh, 2,000 square meters per hour. And of course, the cost is very, very low in, uh, in rotary printing. And, and it was not in digital. So people were comparing that and then saying, oh, digital is not interesting for us. Um, and, and because of that, uh, digital textile machines always have to rely on stuff that is developed for graphics. So even today, every textile digital printer that you see is using a print head which was developed for graphics. And that's why you see a Kyocera head moving one millimeter above the fabric, which in paper is no problem at all, but in fabric it's quite a challenge because there are hairs on it, sometimes there are selvages, it cannot be flat on the, on the uh, belt, so it's quite a challenge. And mainly, normally they have a too high resolution and too small droplets. And textiles, you don't see 600 dpi. And people who say, I need 720 dpi, they are, because I now print with my Mimaki, I print 720 dpi, they don't use it for the resolution, they use it to put down enough ink. Because in the 720 dpi mode, uh, an Epson head delivers more ink than in the 360 dpi mode. So they think it's for the resolution, but actually it's for just putting down enough ink. So then, I, I want to first address the, the, the topic, the dilemma of speed. Uh, and I compare it to the aircraft uh, business, where a long time ago, the, I think it was the Wright brothers, they made the first aircraft, and then about 50 years later, there was the first uh, jet uh, uh, plane. And from there, there came a very successful model, uh, the Boeing 747. And then there was a consortium of French and British uh, airplane builders. They brought the Concorde, which was uh, for the happy few going as fast as possible from A to B. Uh, what we saw in the, uh, in the 747, so in the, in the mainstream planes, is there was two directions. We had the Dreamliner uh, done by Boeing, which is talking about efficiency, and you have the, the workhorse from Airbus bringing as many po people as possible from A to B. If we look to textile, digital textile, then we see some similarities. And we had the first uh, 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 digital textile printer. This is a picture of uh, 1997, it's one of the first. From there, we came to, uh, to a very successful range of Epson uh, printhead based machines, uh, ma mainly a Mimaki bridge with a, with a textile belt under it. From there, we came to Kyocera based machines like uh, our Sveen, but also the MS uh, JP6, uh, Rajani Renoir, this kind of machines. And MS brought uh, to the market uh, Lario, which is the first single pass machine for textiles. And uh, of course, we uh, intentionally put it on top of the uh, Concorde because uh, we see that also this machine is for the happy few. It can do a lot, it can print a lot of fabric, but it prints too much fabric. I will come back to that later. So our strategy is a little bit different. We, we continue on, uh, on the uh, Kyocera platforms that we have now. Um, and we uh, are uh, working together with a company called La Mechanica to bring the scanning machines to the market. But we are also working on a single pass machine, uh, so the, the workhorse, our A380, but then specifically uh, designed to, for, for rotary printers that can make money with that machine. So technologically, printing a lot of fabric has been proven by the Lario, but to make money with it, we think you need something else. So what is the main requirement for such a machine? Well, the first thing is, the obvious one, it has to be fast. It has to deliver a lot of fabric. <coughs> but what is becoming more and more important is quality. Uh, people see that no Kyocera-based machine can reach the printing quality of a JV5. And um, when I said this at another conference, people were shocked because they say, come on, the quality is great. Yeah, but if you, if you compare it one-on-one, -on -one, take a print on a, made on a JV5 and made on a Kyocera machine, you will see the differences. 
So the, and they start, of course, if you get to a larger volume, then reliability becomes more and more important. Because if you now screw up and you don't see it, before you know it, there is 100 meters of fabric away. And if you're then printing on a uh, very expensive silk, it's a painful uh, loss of, uh, of money. So bottom line, what really co comes down is what is now your real integrated cost per meter. So not the theoretical one that you can calculate, but the one that you actually, after one year, how many meters did I, did I print that I could sell, and how much money did I make with that, and how much did it cost me to make it. And the digital pitfall is there that uh, people look at the speed in meters per hour, but they should look at how many meters can I print per year, because they forget that a digital printer almost always runs. And they compare to the 40 meters per minute of a rotary machine, but a rotary machine prints only 25% of its time. The rest of the time they're changing uh, screens or they're uh, cleaning the belt or whatever, but it's not printing. So actually, uh, uh, um, a textile printer, a digital textile printer, which prints 10 or 20 meters per minute, can produce the same amount of meters than a rotary machine in one year. So we are looking at meters per year and not at meters per hour. And if you then look at the calculation, and this is something we made uh, uh, compare a, um, the red line is with a scanning machine and the typical scanning machine today can print about up to 1 million meters per year. So if you do, need to do more than 1 million meters per year, you buy more machines. But you're not saving any more cost because the, the cost is the same. The green line is a single pass, the, the Lario, and there you see that if you are at a high volume, then it's really cheaper than, than a scanning machine. But at low volumes, it's more expensive because of the high investment cost of the machine and because of the uh, fact that you have to uh, change print heads quite regularly. And on the Lario, the standard machine is 120 QCR print heads of 6,000 euros each. So it's a lot of money in, uh, in print heads. So what was the situation in 2013? Yeah, we can say single pass from a technology point of view, it has been proven, it works, you can do it. But from a customer business point of view, we see that it is quite limited, simply because it has too much capacity. And if you don't use the capacity, you still have the cost. So your actual cost is going, is going up. And how many companies can produce more than 3 million meters of digital printed fabric and sell it for a price of more than one, uh, where the cost is more than 1.5 euro per, per meter? That's not many. If you are a digital, if you, if you are a textile printer in, in Europe and you're printing 7 million meters, you're already quite a big printer. So that would mean that half of your total volume you have to uh, sell for a very high price. And they cannot do it. So that is a problem for, for quite a lot of, uh, of, of companies. So if you have a lower volume, you should not think about a single pass, although it looks very attractive because it's fast, but you will earn better money on the scanning machine. So we have defined, out of all our customer interviews that we did over the last year, uh, we said we want to define the ultimate digital textile printer and we want to launch it at ITMA 2015. So we looked at what is now really the problem in, in most of the digital textile print heads, printers and that's the print head. The print head is really the, the weak point. There is no textile print head. So that means uh, that in terms of specifications you don't have the ideal head. Then in terms of cost it's quite expensive. And in terms of reliability, it has a limited life. And if it's broken, even if there's only 50 nozzles closed of the 2,656 that it has, you have to throw away the whole print head. So we came up with a, with a total new concept, which we call a textile print head. <coughs> because we happen to have a relationship with almost all the print head manufacturers in the world. Because part of our company is a precision metal company. So we, we make nozzle plates for uh, uh, Fujifilm uh, heads. We make uh, filters for uh, uh, Kyocera. We make parts of the XAR print head. So we talked to all those guys and we said, this is what we need. But we understand you cannot make a print head from scratch uh, uh, only for textiles, because the amount of money to develop such a thing you would never recover out of the relatively small textile business. So what we did is we looked at what are you, what are you developing, uh, what is your plan of heads for the future, and where can we hook in to make a, a special uh, case for us. That's what we did. Uh, at the moment, we're not saying with whom we are walk, working, but that will, uh, throughout this year, we will disclose this. But that is really a textile print head. 
So what we mean with the textile print head is further away from the fabric, not one millimeter, but much further. So that means you, you are not so vulnerable with fixing the fabric to the, to the belt. It, have, it has a bigger range of droplet sizes, so small drops and big drops, so that you can also print uh, blotches, uh, even surfaces, which is a challenge normally in digital textile. And it will have a lot lower cost and it will be repairable. So that means that if you have to take out a part, you, you put a new one in, but the, one, the part that comes out can be repaired and, and used again. And in that way you reduce the, co the cost uh, dramatically. So this is the, uh, the first image of the, of the machine that we're currently building up in, uh, in Holland. So it is, it is a successor of the single pass technology as it is, as it is known today. Uh, it will have the, the, the characteristics of single pass, so no print heads are moving, they are fixed. <coughs> but we're printing in, in a different way. It will be a proprietary technology in for, for, the, for the print heads. Um, the machine will be completely made in, uh, in Boxmeer in, in Holland by Stork. And it will be economically, so it will be cheaper than a Lario, but already at 3 million meters a year. So at a, at a volume that a lot more people can, uh, can really produce digital. So by the end of this year, we will invite a selected group of customers to come and see the first prototype of the machine, which gives us another 10 months to, to rework all the feedback that we get from that mach uh, machine to the final version, which will be on display in Milan uh, next year, uh, November. So the total machine is about 25 meters long, uh, including the dryer. As you can see here, up to nine uh, stations for printing, which is eight colors and a penetration uh, fluid. Um, and I think that was the last slide. Yeah, okay, conclusions. What we see is that the digital textile technology now finally has come to a stage where really production can be made of it. Eh? You saw 300 million growing to 700 million square meters in the next uh, few years. Uh, we also see it, it will go into the home furnishing market because pigments will come available. And there are now also 3.2 meter wide uh, digital printers. Um, and we will uh, bring single pass technology to the market which will allow economically printing digital on textiles uh, to, uh, for volumes up to 3 million meters per year. And that will bring us into a position that we will uh, lead this, uh, this uh, industry with uh, machines and with inks. We develop and produce all the inks currently in, uh, in Holland, but uh, in future probably also in, uh, in some local markets like Brazil and India. Um, and that's, uh, that's our plan. And hopefully if I stand here again in four years, then we can say, oh, we did quite well. And the machine is there and uh, yes. And then you all say, yes, Jos, you are right. You are leading the market. Thank you for your attention.